Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We are still measuring force. Actually, we are measuring strain. Okay, and the strain and the stress is related and so on about the Young's module. We have talked about this. We talked about how we apply the strain gauges and so on. And now we have the problem, what if the actual strains or the actual load stresses on a piece cannot be determined. How to apply it then? Therefore, there are so-called uh, DMS rosettes, yeah? DMS strain gauge rosettes, yeah? den This is why I wrote DMS here. Den is the German term for it. Yeah? So, strain gauge rosettes. What is such a thing? I've brought it with me. Look at that. This is one of the strain gauge rosettes. You see? There are three of them huh? on one piece. So we determine the, the, the strains in different, different angles. You see, they are labeled A, B, and C, and they do have different, different directions. This here, okay, so this is, uh, you see the, the, the lines, so this is a 0, 45, and 90 degree rosette. There are also 0, 60, and 120 degree rosettes, then the direction of these rosettes is different. Okay, so this is how we can measure with one measurement device with different uh, at different positions. All right. So this is this rosette, and how how to determine now the the main stresses? Huh? So the normal stresses. Uh, there are shear stresses. How to determine the main stresses? Well, it differs if this is a 0, 45, 90 degree like this or 0, 60, 120 degree. Let's write it down. So for rosettes, which have 0 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree. So we have here A, B, C. Okay, these are the directions. Uh, 0, 45 and 90 degree. How are the shear forces uh, or the normal stresses? Uh, the main normal stresses, how are they calculated? Sigma 1 and 2 uh, are, and now it's a big, big formula. You don't have to know this by the top of your head, of course. I also do not know this by the top of my head. But I have to write it down to talk about. These are the main normal stresses. You can calculate it. You have the strains here. You have determined with this rosette. You have the strains in different directions. Uh, this is the Young's module. Uh, this is this is uh, the Poisson number of the material, then that's it. Huh? So this is, this is uh, the main normal stresses. Yeah? If we have a 0, 60, 120 degree rosette, yeah? so we have here A, B and C, 0, 60, 120 degree, okay, then this sigma 1, 2 is calculated similar but not equally, Oh, so a night and tiny formula. <laughs> so, 
These are the two main stresses. Okay. Uh, there is the small circle. I'm not sure if you're familiar, if you are familiar with this. Uh, so there we have this Morse. So if we have here the, the main or the sigmas, eh? so the normal stresses, and here we have the corresponding taus, the shear stresses, eh? then we have here somewhere a sigma 1, here we have somewhere a sigma 2, eh? this is plus minus, some base, eh? so this is the middle, and here we have then a circle. And here we have the main shear stresses, those domain shear stresses. And those two, the, the, the values of those two, we just have determined. Okay, sigma 1 and sigma 2. And out of this, we can calculate tau, the maximum tau, and so on. This is the Morse circle. What we don't know is this is a direction. This is one direction, yeah? and we apply this at some other direction. So we want to determine the angle between the zero angle here, the A, and the main stress direction, uh, the main normal stress direction. Therefore, we use a so-called helper angle, uh, this helper angle, C, Minus. In this case, we calculate it this way, and in this case, we calculate this help angle. That way. And this is always numerator divided by denominator yeah. numerator divided by denominator zähler divided durch nenner right so these are helper this psi helper angle okay now we have this helper angle what to do with this helper angle how to determine the angle between the application and the main stresses. Well, it depends a little bit on which value we have. So, if there is the nominator, uh, the, the numerator, there's the denominator. If this is bigger than zero and this is zero, because we have this tangent here. Therefore, we have to look. This is so-called load case number one. If we have to look at the Morse circle, uh, here's the Morse circle. Then we have here the helper angle. Uh, and this is also 2 phi. Uh, and phi is the angle between the application and the main. So this is always two phi. Yeah? This comes from the Morse circle. I, I'm not going to explain this Morse uh, uh, tension circle uh, because we, we do measure. Yeah? We're talking about measurement. Yeah? So the phi is calculated uh, out of the psi and a half of it. That's load case number one. Okay. Load case number two would be if this is bigger than zero, yeah? and this is smaller or equal zero. 
this is load case number two. What would this mean? In which area of the circle are we there? We are here. Yeah? And actually, we are getting this. This is now our help angle. Yeah? And what we want to know is this. This is 2 phi. Yeah? So phi is 180 degree minus the help angle, this one, and half of it. Then we have the case that we are here smaller and here smaller than zero. Yeah? This is load case number three. How does the circle look like? Actually, we are here. Yeah. Here we have our help angle C yeah. and our main or our application angle. Two times our application angle is this here. Two phi. Yeah. So this means phi is 180 degree plus psi yeah, and half of it. And here, numerator smaller than zero, denominator bigger. This is load case number four. Huh? Then we have here this angle, see, this help angle. And actually what we're interested in is this one. This is 2 phi. So we have 360 degree minus psi and half of it. This is how you calculate the angle between the application, so the A direction, and the main normal forces. The main shear forces can be calculated out of the Morse circle. Yeah. And this is how you can use strain gauge rosettes. Uh, this is how you can use strain gauge rosettes to determine an, a common, common load case, uh, any load case, with the help of those rosettes. Okay. Yeah. Now it's really getting complicated. You see a lot of, of formulas and so on. Uh, that's it. This is what I'm going to tell you about force, shear, torque measurement uh, with the help of strain gauges. Next things we are going to talk about are level measurements. Uh, many different possibili possibilities <laughs> to determine a uh, level in a container. Okay. Next video. Start with level measurement. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.